everybody. When you have a big tank like this, the number one overwhelming cost you're going to have is heating. And that's something you need to be thinking about through the entire design process, through the entire build process. It's something that I didn't put a whole lot of thought into while I was building this, or I would have done something like getting some foam rubber to put underneath the tank. The actual weight per inch isn't that much. It's enormously heavy, but there's so much surface area, it could sit on a foam rubber mat. It would be fine. That would cut my heating costs a lot. I had somebody suggest that for the screws. I didn't really want to do it because the foams were outrageously expensive and I was trying to prove a point with the cost of this. But had I done that, it probably would have saved me about $400 a year on heating. So that's something that you want to keep in mind all the time. And it's not just for tanks this size. Smaller tanks have the same problem. The seven foot tank that used to be behind my desk uses about $550 a year of electricity the way that I bought it. It didn't come with lids. So hooking it up, bumping the temperature to 86, 82 degrees, $550 a year. And that's at nine cents a kilowatt, which is outrageously cheap in the United States. I know my parents in California pay 47 cents a kilowatt, so it would cost them $2,500 a year to keep that tank hot. So the first thing you want to look at when you've got a tank is making sure that you've got some insulation. The number one thing is the surface. You need lids. It doesn't matter what you've got, you need lids. Now for the tank that was behind me, I cut some acrylic lids at some point. Did a video on that. Uh, acrylic has the advantage of being cheap and it's lightweight, but it does warp a little bit, so you're not going to get as good of a seal as you will with glass. So if you're worried about that, Spending a little bit of extra money on glass, it's a little bit more expensive up front, but it's the same insulation. Uh, the values of insulation for glass and acrylic are close enough that it doesn't really matter. You're going to cut about 60% of your power usage right there, just lids. After that, if you look at the walls, you've got about equal heat loss anywhere on the tank. So that tank, I had a black background. You couldn't see the bottom because there was sand. You couldn't see the sides because those are also black. So I went to the hardware store and I got some closed cell foam with uh, aluminum foil on each side. Now this was, it's not styrofoam. That's important to note here. You can see it's kind of a yellowish foam. Uh, this stuff, if you have an air gap between whatever you're insulating and this, uh, you've got an R value of about 13. Now the air gap can't be something where air can swirl. You have to have, uh, like in the case of the big tank, what I did was I got some really thick sticky tape and attached it with that so the area on the inside was empty but there was no way for the air to get out. Uh, like I said, about $14, uh, that's for an eight foot by four foot sheet. So I spent about $60 on that tank. I insulated the back wall where nobody can see it. I insulated the gaps on the bottom. I insulated the side wall. And the power usage for that right now is about 75 kilowatts a month, which is about $70 a year. That's a huge improvement from $550 a year. And if you live someplace that the electricity is higher, you're still gonna see that same reduction. You're still gonna see that 80% reduction in electric cost for $60 of value. So that's something that's absolutely worth thinking about when you design one of these. That is going to be over and above far more expensive than the cost of the tank was itself. Uh, as I said in a couple other videos, this tank cost me a little over $2,000 basically completed, not counting decorations or anything that I sourced myself, just the tank. But if you're building one of these yourself, absolutely, your primary concern, the entire process through needs to be, how do I keep the heat in? So the first thing you want to consider is materials because the materials have different resistance to heat transfer, things that are called R values. So if you look at something like Joey's concrete tank, a foot, 12 inches of concrete has an R value of about one. I get the same thing out of about an inch of plywood. So if you do two, three quarter inch sheets of plywood the whole way around, you're already better insulated than he is. The higher the value, the lower your heat loss is. So I've gone through and I've put this stuff everywhere that you cannot see on this tank. 
and that takes my total heating from about 12,000 watts down to about 900-ish. Now I've got some corrugated plastic on order for the lid. That's going to bring it down to probably in the order of about four, probably about 5,000. And then the background itself, the concrete background has a water gap behind it. It's not really permeable, so there's not really any way for the water to flow through. It's just there. And that also is going to give a barrier that's going to resist some amount of heat transfer. Not nearly as much as an air gap will, but it will be some. The overall heat needed for this tank is probably going to be about 4,600 watts. And that's every hour of every day of every year. So, if you look at heating and you look at something like water heaters, uh, you know, the big household water heaters, I think that's something that Joey used in his design for flowing through the floor. Those are like 99.8% efficient, and you may think that's a good idea. But 4,600 watts every hour of every day for every year is going to cost me $3,600. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Now that's better, that's better than it was. It would have been $10,000. So $3,600, because I spent a little bit of time thinking about insulation, that's absolutely a good investment of your time. But it's far more than I want to spend on a hobby that's something that's pretty to look at. Even if I spend a lot of time fiddling with it and trying to come up with ideas for things to do with it and talking about it on videos online, it's still a tremendous amount of money to be putting into a hobby. So how do you bypass that without lowering the temperature? And the secret is you do not create heat, you move it. And that's what a heat pump does. A heat pump is more than 100% efficient because it's not generating heat, it's just moving it from one location to another. So if you have an air conditioner, what it'll do is the cold coils in your house will absorb heat, it will take it outside, the fan outside will suck the heat out, and then it'll put it back inside cold. So you're moving heat from the inside to the outside. It's the same thing that your refrigerators do, it's the same thing as freezers, I'm just doing it in reverse. In theory, doing it in reverse is more efficient. Now, one of the things that I purchased with the money that you guys have given me on Patreon, thank you again, Alex and Consuelo, for your donations, I went out and I got a used floor freezer. And you can see over here, uh, it took a while for me to tear that thing apart, but I wanted to have something that I could play with, something that I could show you kind of the pieces and parts of it as it works, uh, just because it's a little bit simpler for something that's already put together. So the next video, we're going to talk about this heat pump that I designed, how heat pumps work, and why this is going to be a massive improvement on that 4,600 watts required for this tank. We'll see you guys then.